What is a human? It's mostly hairless compared to other animals. It could run well. It could communicate better than anything. And that's with thousands of different languages. Create and use all types of tools. And it's the most creative being in the world. If you've seen our second episode of where humans came from, you're familiar with the Homo habilis. And the Homo habilis evolves for so long that they turn into the Homo erectus. And this is the third episode of where humans came from. Just now, we reached ancient humans. And that's because the Australopithecus or the Homo habilis don't count as humans. It looks mostly like an ape than a human. But after millions of years, around 1 million years ago, the Homo erectus start to show around the world. So why is the Homo erectus considered the first human and not the other ones that came before it? First of all, it was much more intelligent. The tools they would use is found everywhere in the world and it shows their brain power was much better than before. It was the first human that finally left Africa and went everywhere else. In the last video, we introduced the Homo habilis, which basically defines handyman. And the reason they gave it this name was that they thought the Homo habilis was the first human to create tools. But later on, they realized that the first ever human, the Australopithecus, created the first tool. Australopithecus. Up next, Homo habilis. And when we get to Homo erectus, about 2 million years has already passed. So this evolution took about 2 million years and we just got to Homo erectus about 1 million years ago. So look-wise, how different did the Homo erectus look like? The Homo erectus got bigger, taller, smaller teeth, smaller jaw, and its jaw moved back. And most importantly, its brain power grew inside. The way this human stood and the way it walked was the reason they gave it this name. Homo erectus basically means a human that could stand upright because its spine was more straight than the other ones before it. If you remember, the Homo habilis brain size is about 600 cubic centimeters. But Homo erectus brain size has basically doubled at about 1200 cubic centimeters. And this is extremely close to modern humans because our brain size is about 1350 cubic centimeters. When we look at the body of a Homo erectus, we see that not only is the spine more straight, but it has a smaller waist. And with the help of that, it allows the Homo erectus to run much faster and not have a hard time doing so for a long period of time. Some scientists say the reason that Homo erectus became much more hairless than the other ones before it is that they would run for a long period of time and the hair would make them get extremely hot. So the longer the time goes on, the more hairless these humans get. Do you see the Homo erectus? Even though it came from the Homo habilis, but it's much closer to a modern human than the Homo habilis itself. When scientists examined the bone of the Homo erectus, they realized that it ate a lot of meat and it basically made up most of its diet. So that shows us that it could hunt really well. It is a theory, but it's very obvious that they most likely hunted in groups. One of the most important thing our brain power helps us do is communicate with one another. So could Homo erectus communicate with one another using a language? Unfortunately, Talking does not fossilize. 
and they couldn't write so they didn't write anything down for us to read. And that is why there is some doubt on if they could talk or not. But we know something. We know that its brain power was much better than the ones before it and it most likely could communicate very well. We don't know the language or how it spoke but we know that with this brain power you could communicate with each other very well. If you've seen our video about when humans controlled fire, you're familiar when the humans actually were able to do it, and it was by the Homo erectus. One of the most important discoveries human had figured out is controlling fire. This fire allowed people to cook their food, and since it's easier to chew cooked food, our teeth got smaller, made our jaws smaller, and since cooked food is more nutrition than raw food, it helped our brain to grow more in size and our body to grow. In our video about controlling fire, we gave an estimation on when we did this and it was figured out by the dirt that was cooked underneath it. Like one family in a location had the fire going for years on end and since it was on for so long, it literally cooked the dirt underneath it. And the way the dirt cooked shows us that this was a campfire site that was ancient but unfortunately you can't put an exact date on it because homo erectus lived on earth for about one million years and it's not like a hundred years where you can figure out the date but there is a theory that some scientists and archaeologists had come up with and they say ancient humans cooked food before fire and they knew how to cook it halfway at least but they had to be next to hot springs they would put the meat inside these hot waters and after some time it would halfway cook and they realized it was easier to eat and it tasted a little bit better but of course this is all a theory we can't put an exact date on when the homo erectus left africa but we could estimate about 700,000 years ago but some scientists deny this and give a different date on when they left. And some believe that they left about 200,000 years ago. But something that is guaranteed is that Homo erectus discovered to control fire, then they left Africa because now they could live in colder climate. The tools that Australopithecus and Homo habilis used was a simple rock that had a sharp head, but the handle or where they held onto the stone was not very well made. But Homo erectus would build tools with rocks that was very sharp and it also was nice to hold in your hand. An interesting tool that was made by Homo erectus is this, which is called the hand axe, a very heavy piece of stone that's extremely sharp. With the help of this tool, they did pretty much everything with it. They hunted with it, they cut meat with it, they got rid of the bones with it, and anything else they needed. These tools are extremely heavy and very sharp, and with one hit, you could damage something very badly. Imagine five Homo erectus with five of these hand axes, they could easily defeat any size animal. You could say some of these Homo erectus realize that their brain power is what keeps them alive. There were a lot of wooden tools back then but wood doesn't fossilize that easily and it's not like stone that could stay for millions of years. The oldest wooden tool that was found is a wooden spear that's about 500,000 years old and that's during the Homo erectus era. They're not sure how it stayed 500,000 years but it was buried underneath. They even found tools that were made from animal bones but this was extremely rare compared to other tools, especially stone. There is some drawing that was left by Homo erectus as well. A very simple drawing that has been done on this clam and this was found in Java, Indonesia. It's not a complicated drawing but hundreds of thousands of years ago, a Homo erectus drew this. You could say this is the first drawing. But in our video about Australopithecus, we showed this piece of rock that has a face on it. But they don't know if the Australopithecus carved this or it naturally came like this. When you look at the life of Homo erectus throughout history, you see that they were here for a very long time and they evolved very well. 
You can't compare their evolution to right now, but for back then, they evolved very quickly. Scientists believe that about 117,000 years ago, Homo erectus vanished. It's not like they disappear. They basically turn into two different branches where the stronger ones survive and the weaker ones die off, which is called natural selection. After this, we have two different types of human. One of those is Neanderthal, which you should know, and the other ones are Homo sapien, which you should really know because that's us. You have to know that in terms of science, all of these things we said are facts we read, but the times are all theory. Like some scientists say that Homo erectus showed up about 1 million years ago, but some others say no, about 1.5 million years ago they began to show up. There is different theories about the time, but the main story on what happened and what took place is all the same. After this video, we're gonna reach Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, and their story is very interesting and some call it much more interesting than Homo erectus because this is a time where two different types of humans are living amongst each other and in the end of it one of these humans has to die off.